We thought we'd have a little change up this week, so instead of our regular schedule, we'll be playing five episodes from the 1946 radio show Intrigue. We hope you enjoy. CBS presents Intrigue, Tales of Espionage, Manhunt, and High Adventure. Good evening. This is Joseph Schildkraut, your guide tonight on a most captivating journey into the land of Intrigue. The teller of our tale is the acknowledged master of the literature of deception and conspiracy, E. Phillips Oppenheim, and the story is his masterpiece, The Great Impersonation, a deft blending of love, secret enterprise, and malevolent cunning. So, come with us on another strange adventure into the uneasy, fascinating land of intrigue. Joseph Schildkraut stars in the dual role of Sir Everard Dominey and Baron Leopold von Ragastein as Columbia presents The Great Impersonation. Our story has a prologue. It is the year 1914. At a settlement deep in the jungle of German East Africa, two men wearing the uniform of the German Imperial Army sit at the bedside of a haggard, fever-ridden derelict. Please, please, my dear, do not exert yourself. Who are you? Uh, Where the mischief am I? Dr. Ludwig Schmidt, this Imperial Majesty's Africa Corps. We're within half a mile of the Awai River, about 72 miles southeast of the Darawaga settlement. You are perhaps aware that this region is forbidden to British nationals? You are British, of course. Yes, I... I'm awfully sorry to have intruded. I I was doing a trek after Lyon when my native bearers deserted me. I say you couldn't possibly give me a drink, could you? It is my opinion as a medical man, sir. You have had quite enough of drink during the past few years. Come, come now, doctor. Don't be such a blue nose. Here. Here's some brandy. I've been saving it for just such an occasion. Oh, thanks. That's better. Devilish good brandy, that... I say... Please, you must not try to sit up. I know what's worrying our friend there. He thinks he's looking into a mirror. Yes, there's an amazing likeness between us. Isn't there, Doctor? Yes, Excellency, I had noticed it. Why, you're... You're Baron von Ragastein. Why, you... You were at Eton with me. Quite. And so we meet again, eh, Dominic? Some years older both, and both of us exiles from our native lands. We might have been born twins, this Englishman and I, eh, Doctor? Well, Excellency, in a manner of speaking, Ed. Uh, the Doctor is referring to my wasted youth, no doubt. I intended no insult, I assure you. Now tell us, my dear cousin, we are cousins, I believe. What tragedy brought you here to this wilderness? Uh, it's all right for the patient to talk now, isn't it, Doctor? For a few minutes longer, Excellency. Well, it's a strange sort of a story. Not a thing that could happen in Germany at all, I dare say. I fell in love with a girl in the village near my estates. She was engaged to marry a chap. Uh, Roger Unthank was his name. She broke off the engagement to marry me. We were quite happy until... Uh... Please, <clears throat> pour me another brandy, will you, Doctor? I don't recommend it. Go ahead, let him have it. Uh, very well, Excellency. Thanks. Well, for Augustine, to make a long story short, the chap attacked me one night as I was walking up to my house through the woods. We fought and... You killed him? Well, I left him there in the wood for dead. When my wife heard the news and saw me covered with her ex-lover's blood, why, she became hysterical. She tried to kill me. Uh, please. Hmm? Oh, uh, as you wish. Yes? And after that, Dominic? Uh, she suffered a complete mental breakdown. Refused to allow me near her. 
Aunt Fang's mother, an old witch, if there ever was one, came around to look after her. You know, it wasn't very pleasant living in the house with the mother of the man I had supposedly killed, but my wife would allow no one else to nurse her. Well, I left the house and after that, England. And that's my story, Von Rogerstein. That's 11 years ago. I haven't been home since. You know, Excellency, the resemblance between you and the Englishman is truly striking, both physically and as to the experiences in life. But if you will permit me, I... Come along, Doctor. Our friend is getting tired. We'll let him sleep now. Oh, excellent prescription. Good night, sir. Oh, good night. And thanks awfully. I only did what any doctor would do. Good night, Dominic. Sleep well. Look, he's dead to the world already. Step outside, Doctor. I want to talk to you. Yeah, boy, Excellency. Doctor, I think... I have a great plan. It is something you do not wish the Englishman to hear? Exactly. We speak in German. Languages happen to be the man's only accomplishment, especially German. Hmm? He went to university in Germany, just as I did in England. <laughs> when he returned home, his people told him he spoke English with a slight German accent. <laughs> However, I think we needn't worry about his overhearing us, Doctor. I took the liberty of taking some sleeping powders out of your medical kit and mixed them with his brandy. And, and your plan, Excellency? My plan? Yes. I shall return to England as Sir Everard Domini. There's the prologue, and here's the story. To Chief of Intelligence from Agent R03N and Z. Upon arrival in London, I telephoned James Mangan, the solicitor of Sir Everard Dominey's estates. I thought it best to make my first public appearance in London in the company of a respected friend and advisor to the Dominey family. He seemed suspicious of my identity at first, but agreed to meet me at Claridge's for luncheon. I arrived five minutes early and was waiting just inside the door of the restaurant when... Leopold! Why didn't you tell me you were coming to London? I beg your pardon, madam. I am afraid you're mistaking me for someone else. Oh, Leopold, stop joking. My name is Sir Everard Domini. Oh, so that's it. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. But I'm quite sure that no one overheard me. Oh, really, I... Listen, my darling. I am very well known in English society. Nothing can make it right or wrong or indiscreet for you to visit me. Here's my card. I'll expect you tonight at 7 o'clock. Now, look here, madam. Uh, Stephanie... Oh, you do remember my name. And if you remember other things, you know that I will not be trifled with. If you wish to succeed with whatever scheme you have on hand, you must not make an enemy of me. What do you mean by that? Think it over, darling. I had counted on difficulties with former connections of Everard Domini. I had not counted on trouble from Leopold von Ragerstein's friends. It was necessary to get out of London and away from Stephanie as soon as possible, for she was the princess over whom von Ragerstein had fought his sensational duel. Newspaper accounts of the affair had been printed all over Europe with pictures of Stephanie and Baron von Ragerstein. For the new Everard Dominey to be seen in public with the same woman was a thing I had to avoid at all costs. I had no trouble establishing my identity with Mangan, the Dominey solicitor, and made arrangements to drive up to Norfolk to visit my ancestral estate the following day. After lunch, I went to see the German agent, Seaman. You're not doing badly for your first day in a new identity. For the time being, however, you will not contact anyone but myself. When the time comes, you will be approached by our ambassador here, who will deliver to you certain documents important to our successful prosecution of the war we will shortly fight against England. War is imminent, then? A matter of weeks. These documents, which the ambassador will deliver to you a few hours before the declaration of war are the master plan for all our sabotage in the British Isles. At present, it is safe only in the hands of our ambassador, who enjoys diplomatic immunity. Rather than to deliver it into the hands of one of our agents, it is now our plan to deliver it to you, or rather to Sir Everard Dominey, a British subject who is above suspicion. You understand now why it is so very important that you succeed in your masquerade? I had not realized how important it was. Well, uh, now you know. Mr. Seaman, there's one thing that worries me. Yes? Stephanie, the Princess Eiderstrom. 
She approached me at carriages and called me Leopold within hearing of a dozen or more people. Luckily, I don't think anyone was listening, but it might have been disastrous. You'll have to talk to her and explain that she must be more discreet in the future. She even insists that I see her this evening. Now, you must go to her and tender my apologies. I am driving to Norfolk tonight to my <laughs> ancestral estate, Dominey Hall. You are sure it is wise for you to go there? If I am to establish myself as Sir Everard Dominey, it's essential. But his wife, she's staying there, isn't she? Confined to her room, my dear seaman. Lady Dominey is hopelessly insane. <laughs> It was around six in the evening when Mangan, the family solicitor, and I arrived at Dominey Hall. The house was deserted, but there was a fire in the library, and we settled down there to discuss the problem of the prodigal's return. You must not you understand, Sir Everard. Make any attempt to see your wife. She is confined to her own wing of the house, and it would be better if she were not even informed of your return. She still threatens to kill me if I sleep under the same roof. Mm, I'm sorry, but that is the case. Mm. It's gloomy here. Where are the servants? Oh, they've all gone home hours ago. They won't stay here after dark, you know. Why not? Why? Because of the ghost, of course. Ghost? The ghost of Roger Unsank, the man you supposedly killed, Sir Everard. What? It is said to visit her ladyship every night. Tell me, has anyone else seen this so-called ghost besides her ladyship? Well, you know how superstitious the country folk are. Your wife's doctor says it's a hallucination of hers. Personally, I think she's encouraged in it by Roger Unthank's mother. Roger Unthank's mother? Yes, she's the old woman who looks after her. Yes, come in. Ah, uh, good evening, Mrs. Unthank. Who is this man, Mr. Mangan? Oh, it's your master, Sir Everard. Come home again, Mrs. Unthank. Is this really you, Everard Dominey? Yes. It is, Mrs. Unthank. There's no place in this house for Everard Dominey. If that's who you are, get back to where you came from, back oh, to your hiding. My good woman, you go too far. I've not come to bandy words with lawyers. I've come to speak to him. Can you face me, Everard Dominey? You who murdered my son and made a mad woman of your wife. Mrs. Unthank, return to your duties at once and remember that this house is mine. To enter or leave when I choose. You've come back a harder man than you used to be. Let me look at you. Yes, you look like him, but there's something in your face that's not the same. What on earth makes you think I might be an imposter, Mrs. Unthank? Because Everard Domini would have been afraid to return to this house. Well, here I am. If you're an imposter, then it will be quite safe for you to sleep in this house. If you're ever a dominey, you'll not live through the night. Who is it? Who's there? If you move or cry out, I'll plunge this knife straight into your throat. What do you want? I want to look at you. Don't reach for the light. I can see you well enough by the moonlight. Rosamond. Is it true you're mad? Mrs. Unfeng said it wasn't really you. But you know better, don't you, Rosamond? I've sworn to kill my husband. Are you really my husband? What was that? Roger, he's unhappy tonight. Is that the ghost they told me about, Rosamond? I don't think he wants me to kill you. Yes, Roger, I'm coming. Good night, strange. Good night. <laughs> After she'd gone, I lay there in a cold sweat, listening to the silence that had settled over the house once more. I touched the spot in my throat where she had held the knife blade ready to plunge it and end my life. There was a pinpoint of blood where it had punctured the skin. The madness of Lady Dominey, which had seemed such an advantage to Baron von Ragerstein when he planned his impersonation, was a threat. 
to the life of any man who chose to impersonate Sir Everard Domini. <laughs> Sir Good morning. I'm Parkinson, so the butler, oh. Mr. Mangan, that's up from the city. Well, I hope you don't believe in ghosts, Parkins. Oh, I've been told all about it, sir, and also about her ladyship's unfortunate illness. I believe you'll find me discreet. Discreet, Parkins? The Princess Eitherstone is waiting what? for you in the library, Sir Everett. The princess? When did she arrive? On the early train, sir. We rode up from the station together. Oh, she's a very beautiful lady, sir. Yes, she's indeed, Parkins. Uh, where shall I put her luggage, sir? Leave it in the car, Parkins. The princess will be going back on the next train. But, sir, Yes, that'll be all, Parkins. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, my dear, you oh, really... Dear Paul, darling, don't be angry with me. I simply had to see oh, you. Stephanie, you leave this house at once. And if I refuse? I thought Seaman had explained to you. It wasn't like you, Leopold, to send another man to explain to the woman who loves if you. If you love me, Stephanie, in heaven's name, leave this house at once. Your presence here endangers my whole mission. I'll go, Leopold. I'll do anything you say, only take me in your arms and show me that everything is the same between us. That when you are finished with this terrible assignment, we'll be together again. Don't you understand, my dear? I am not Leopold von Ragerstein. I'm Sir Everard Domini. Everard Domini does not make love to a woman, not his wife. Can't you throw off this masquerade for even a moment? Look at me. I am the woman for whose love you killed a man who went into exile. I am the woman who, for love of you, gave up everything in life. Family, friends, my native land. Is it too much to ask that you take off this cold English mask you're wearing for just a moment? A word, a gesture would be enough. Is it too much to ask? If I am to succeed in my mission, I must be Everard Domini at all times, in public and in private. I must live the part, or else there's grave danger for all of us. You were never one to run away from danger, Leopold. Especially where women were concerned. Or are you, Leopold? Your face... Your voice, your gestures, that is. But your eyes, when they look at me. Who are you? I am Sir Everard Domini. You will have to be content with that for now, Stephanie. Perhaps one day Leopold von Ragerstein will return it all be as it was. But for now... But for now and for all eternity you are another man. Now I know it. If I have deceived even you, then I have succeeded. Where is Leopold? What have you done with him? Please, you'll be overheard, Let Stephanie. them hear me. Let the whole world hear me. You are another man, but you shan't get away with it. Berlin shall be informed of it. The Kaiser himself shall know that his most trusted agent in England is an imposter. His Imperial Majesty. Your Majesty. Baron von Reichstein. <laughs> It pleases us to see a German officer ill at ease without his uniform. I pray that I may wear it soon in the highest service of my emperor in my fatherland. Your prayer will be answered, Baron. Now then, I have sent for you to have a few words concerning your habitation in England. Your Majesty does me great honor. Word has come to me that there was doubt as to your identity. Doubt arising from a source that could not be discounted. Your Majesty, my instructions were to proceed to England and to establish myself there in the role of a trusted British subject. Am I to blame, Your Majesty, if I have played the part of Sir Everard Domini so well that even Leopold von Ragerstein's lady love doubts his identity? <laughs> I like your spirit. You are everything I've been led to expect of Baron von Ragerstein. <laughs> Hello, Rosamond. Everett, you've come back. I was afraid you wouldn't. Well, I've come home for good this time, darling. Let me look at you, Everett. Mm. You find me much changed? Stronger. Perhaps better looking. There's something gone from your face which I thought... I thought could never be lost. Where did you go, Everett? To Berlin, on a business trip. Perhaps that's what it is. You're always a little different when you've been speaking German for a long time. Do you love the Princess Eidestron, ever? The pri No, of course not. Mrs. Unthank says you look like a man that killed her husband in a quarrel over her. Mrs. Unthank thought you were that man. A German. She thought that, did she? Are you that man? Would it make a great difference to you, Rosamond? 
No. No, it would make no difference. I've fallen in love all over again. With you. Whoever you are. I love you, Rosamund. Everything is going to be wonderful, dear. You'll get well and everything will be as it used to be when you were happy. I'm not much better, though. I heard Roger's voice again last night. I think that voice will go away, Rosamund, very soon. Yes? I beg pardon, sir. There's a gentleman calling. Prince Tanilov. Tanilov? The German ambassador? Mm, yes, dear. It's a business matter. Excuse me, darling. He's in the library, sir. Thank you, Perkins. Ah, Prince Tarnilov. Baron von Ragnarstein. Or should I say, Sir Everard Domini? We can talk in this room, Excellency. It's completely soundproof. One of the improvements Sir Everard made in the house since his return <laughs> from Africa. <laughs> Excellent. It was necessary for me to come to you for this the third and last of our meetings from Dragstein. Oh, why the last, Excellency? The embassy is under surveillance. In short, Baron... The glorious day is at hand. Attack? In a matter of hours, the Kaiser's armies march. Yeah, I have brought the documents in this dispatch case. It's no longer safe in my hand. I accept it as a sacred trust, Excellency. Well, these documents are the master plan for our wartime sabotage in England. Their loss would seriously cripple the operation of our intelligence services here. I'll handle them accordingly. Then I, I'm confident you will. And I must leave you. Time runs short. The attack, Baron. The attack, Excellency. I carried the dispatch case over to the table and snapped on a lamp. With trembling fingers, I broke the imperial seals and unwound the tapes. As I reached into the packet, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the leaded panes of the garden window. It was haggard and drawn. I hadn't been aware that I'd been living under such a tension. And then... While I stood still, my reflection moved. The tall window swung open and it stepped into the room, followed by another man. My reflection was the real Baron, and he carried a revolver in straight at me. Seaman was the first to speak. Well, Sir Robert, congratulations on your success in impersonating yourself. Who had a better right? <laughs> How pale he is, Baron. How he trembles. How could we ever have been persuaded that he was you? Your stupidity will be dealt with later, Simon. You can start redeeming yourself now by taking that dispatch case and shit checking on the contents. Yeah, well, Excellency. Uh, yes, yes, these are the documents. The seals are broken, but the contents are undisturbed. That is well for you, Simon. After all, it was my idea to follow Ternilov here. Don't forget that. Yes, I shall note that in my report to his Imperial Majesty. Your Excellency is a man of justice. Don't believe him, Simon. He'll have you shot for the blunder you made. Help me and you'll be rewarded. Silence, you British swine. You're not going to live long enough to reward anybody. Seaman? Yes, Excellency. You have arranged for disposing of the body? Yeah, yeah. All is arranged. It won't work, von Dragerstein. It's too late. You see, you counted on my wife's insanity to make the masquerade possible, eh? Well, not only has her condition improved, but she and I have been reconciled. It's too late for you to take my place in this house. There is something in what he says, Excellency. Perhaps it would be better if ever our dominance simply disappeared. Silence, you idiot. Excuse me, I... So you doubt my ability to convince your wife, eh, Domine? That's a hasty conclusion, but then you are given to hasty conclusions, my friend. If you hadn't been in such a hurry, you would have realized that I wasn't quite as dead as you thought I was when you left me for dead in Africa. And if you stop to reflect on what you know of my success with women, you would realize that it won't matter whether I convince Lady Dominey that I'm really her husband or not. When she gets acquainted with me, I think she will be well satisfied with the exchange. I understand, by the way, she's not unattractive, eh? A beautiful woman, Excellency. Why, you dirty... Piston! Map, map, them! Well, Domini, have you said your prayers? <laughs> I really should like a little more ceremony about all this, but it's suppose it ends up to the same thing in the end. I shall simply have to shoot you. Excellency. Quiet, you disturb my... But your Excellency... Drop that gun, what? Everard who? Domini. Who? This is a gun I'm holding in your ribs, Everard Domini. Who? Do who? as I tell you. Stand over there against the wall. In the light, I don't want to miss. She thinks you're Domini. She wants to kill Domini. My good woman, you are making a great mistake. I'm not Domini. You can't fool me, Everard Domini. You killed one man and would have killed another if I'd not stopped well, you. Well, I'm not Domini. He, he's Domini. Look at him. Can't you see? You look alike, but I know a murderer's face. Yours is a murderer's face. Speak to him. Make him speak, friend. You'll know. Very well. 
Let me hear your voice, whoever you are. Come on. Come on, talk to her. Come on, talk to her. Ich bedauere, ich spreche gar kein Englisch. Ich weiß gar nicht, was Sie von mir wollen. <laughs> He's not even English. Who are you? Why do you want to kill Dominic? I am the mother of the man you killed. And now you've drawn Rosamond under your spell again. She no longer cares about what happened to my son. That's why I know you're really Everard Dominic. And that's why I'm going to kill you. You're mad. You killed my son. And now you're going to die. No. Die. <laughs> Mrs. Huntfank's aim was excellent. Baron von Ragerstein slumped to the floor dead, this time beyond any doubt. With the help of the reluctant seaman, I removed the body from the house, and I saw to it that it was delivered to those very efficient gentlemen of the German Secret Service who already had their instructions about what to do with it. Mr. Seaman, who stood very close to me while I held a gun in his ribs, convinced them that it was the body of Sir Everard Dominic. After that had been done, I drove him to the fortress, where I left him and the dispatch case in the care of the governor, one of our veteran British intelligence officers. It was after midnight when I returned to Dominey Hall. Rosamund met me at the door. Everard. Everard, are you all right, darling? He's not Everard. I killed Everard. He's dead. Look in the library and you'll see. What happened? I thought I heard a shot. Yes, darling. <laughs> that was the first shot of the First World War. <laughs> Oh, shut up, you old witch. And now listen to me. You've just killed a man. Only I know who that man was. Only I can save you. Now, if you don't want to hang, you'd better start talking. Talking? Yes, about the ghost, your son, and all the rest of this nonsense. I didn't know it was my son at first. He was always a wild boy. He never meant any harm. But after he lost that fight to Sir Everard in the wood, he went all unhinged like... He was living there like a wild thing, afraid to come out and face his old friends. And then he got this idea of driving Sir Everard away from the house by pretending to be a ghost. What are you saying, son? Roger is alive. Alive he is, if you call it being alive. I tried to take him food and make him live decent. But he's a wild thing. Crazy. Crazy for the love of you. That's why I still say he's dead. Dead. And Sir Everard killed him as sure as he shot him there in the woods that night. I think I'll get the cutters up here tomorrow and cut down that patch of woods. It uh, spoils the view from the terrace. Sir, you drive him out of the wood. What will become of him? He's a wild thing, sir. A poor wild thing. Well, I think you'd be much better off in an asylum, Mrs. Huntley. Perhaps you'd like to go along and look after him, eh? I shouldn't mind. I only wanted to be where I could look after him. I'm sorry, Miss Huntley. I'm terribly sorry. Sir Everard, that man I shot, did you say he was a spy? Yes, Mrs. Huntley, one of the most important spies in the German secret service. Oh, lovey, just wait until I tell my Roger. I shot a spy. <laughs> And that, sir, concludes my report. If at any time I can again be of service, I trust that you, as Chief of British Intelligence, will call upon me. Very truly yours, Sir Edward Dominic. There. Even Mrs. Unthank will like my report, darling. Poor old soul. My darling, I... Don't start explaining anything else, Everard. I'll really go mad. Just take me in your arms. My sweet. I should have known. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes... Sometimes it's more exciting not to know. CBS has brought you Joseph Shilkraut as the star of E. Phillips Oppenheim's The Great Impersonation. Again, Mr. Shilkraut. Next week, the star of Intrigue is a Girl. Our play is The Smiler with a Knife. Our star is Virginia Bruce. Until then, good night and good listening. Adapted by Robert Tallman, Intrigue is another Columbia feature production directed and produced by Charles Vanda. Intrigue theme was composed by Gail Kubik with score by Lucian Merovac and conducted by Lud Gluskin. James Matthews speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com.
Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.